in a nutshell, we came up with this idea because we thought that there was really a lot of focus on um, the role of power in supply chain research. And in particular, um, there's, there's long been a focus on if you have power, you should use it. And that's kind of one of those taken for granted things. Um, so for example, you know, I used to work at IBM and you know, I negotiated large scale contracts. And the idea is, is that if we had the power, we wanted to you know, basically pull our power lever uh, as, as firmly as we could. So this paper looks at power non-use. And basically the idea about exchange diffusion is, is that there are certain situations in buyer supplier relationships and uh, in supply chains more generally where um, power is not necessarily structured in the supply chain. So in other words, maybe there's a multinational company that's you know, buying across multiple geographies or multiple different product divisions, okay? But there's, there's no uh, central feature of the organization or no central buying that happens when they're negotiating with a particular supplier. So the dispersed ge geography or products that they're buying uh, and the inputs that they're buying for those don't allow them to consolidate and structure their power in a way uh, that allows them to use it and maximize it. And the other thing is, is that not only does it have to be structured, but there's got to be some sort of an organizational component in terms of you know, how do we centralize, how do we communicate uh, and organize uh, in a way that allows us to you know, bundle our power uh, and, and use it in a way that's meaningful. Uh, the idea about constraint mitigation, though, is a little bit different. Uh, instead of exchange diffusion, that basically looks at situations where firms might not want to use all of their power, even though they have it. So um, an example would be, you know, Boeing. Boeing's a very powerful global company, and, you know, they have uh, extraordinary power because of the nature of the industry that they're in. But there may be situations where they are buying from let's say a small supplier and they make up the vast majority of that supplier's overall revenue. Well, what if that supplier uh, is a key input? So think of, of something like the landing gear, right? Which use very specialized material to, to ensure that it can absorb the shock of the landing of an aircraft. Well, Boeing, because of the nature of those materials and the nature of the inputs, they may want to relinquish their power and they may not want to leverage it because of the coordination needs between them and the supplier. So, so those are sort of the two central features of the paper where we introduce this idea about exchange diffusion and a lack of structuring and bundling of power and also this idea about constraint mitigation, which is a situation where a firm may voluntarily relinquish their power even though they have it. conceptual theory building approach. Um, in a nutshell, we don't necessarily go out and collect data or anything along those lines. This is based upon uh, our read of where the literature is at right now. Uh, and there seems to be a lot of emphasis on the role of power and its use, but not necessarily on non-use. So our idea was to try to build ideas and theory about, you know, when firms are either unable uh, to use their power uh, or they or they shouldn't use their power, so they cannot or should not use their available power. So power non-use in buyer supplier exchanges, you know, the idea is is that you know sometimes there are certain tasks where there's high levels of coordination and collaboration that's needed. So when we think about power non-use, our argument is is that there are certain times when even though you have the power, if, if you push too hard, it's going to create some problems, which is ultimately going to harm your performance down the road. Maybe the supplier will you know, look to work with other uh, buyers and they'll give them favorable uh, delivery terms and things along those lines. So the idea is about power non-uses is, is that you know, there's, there's basically there's situations when although power might be available to use, it, it just basically doesn't make sense. The other idea is, is that um, you know, the firm hasn't adequately thought through how it should be structured to maximize using its power. 
So specifically, what we mean there is is that you know an an organization and and you know in terms of the example that I just used, you know maybe multinational multinational company and or a multi product company. So they may be buying you know many many different inputs or even the same you or even the same input from the same supplier across multiple geographies or multiple product uh, types. So in terms of, they don't necessarily have visibility into what's happening all across the different product divisions or all across the globe. So what happens then is the power can't adequately be structured. And we also make the case that even if the power could be structured in a meaningful way, um, you still have to make sure that there are coordination mechanisms within the firm to make sure that people are talking to one another so that they're adequately leveraging uh, the power that they have available to them. Exchange diffusion and how it could work beyond buyer-supplier relationships. Some of the key things that we think about is, is when in, you have a, a, an organization that has multiple uh, multiple units or multiple manufacturing sites across the globe. Um, you know, how, did, how are they organized in a way that they speak in a way and they're communicating on a regular basis so that they have the ability to know what each of the different units are doing so that they can make better strategic decisions and they can, and they can align the things that they're trying to do um, via centralization in, in a lot of cases. So, so those are sort of the key ideas with respect to that. The big hope is, is that you, you we're gonna kind of find a little bit more balance with respect to the narrative on power use versus non-use. And, and really the goal was to try to introduce new theory, new ideas, so, a lot of the research that's done, instead of just focusing on, you know, when firms have power that they should use it and focusing on when have when firms have power, when they shouldn't use it or can't use it because they're limited in some ways. So then we can start to understand why are firms not using their power? What's hindering them from using their power? What are the things that lead to situations where firms, you know, are, are not able to effectively leverage their total spend? Um, so, so, so that's where, where our hope is. And in terms of these specific theories, there are a lot of theories that have been used over time to understand buyer-supplier exchanges or inter-organizational relationships and supply chain relationships more generally. And our hope is, is that you know, theories like transaction cost economics, uh, the relational view, that these insights that we've provided can be integrated into those views so we have a more holistic understanding of what's happening. Uh, in supply chains and understanding not only you know how suppliers effectively use their power but when it makes the most sense not to and how that enables firms to actually perform better because they're developing more collaborative um, relationships with their supply base so they're able to collectively perform better we're really excited about these ideas and you know there's just for a long time um, you know we, we've for, for decades, actually, we've talked about, you know, those who have power should use it. And, you know, even some of these ideas are from, you know, Sun Tzu's The Art of War, um, which is a very famous book. And, you know, basically, we, we talk about situations where suppliers can use this idea about exchange diffusion to also divide and conquer with respect to even more powerful Buyer. So, so our hope is is that we've we've come up with something a little bit novel in terms of uh, where the literature needs to turn to, and hopefully we've developed some testable ideas that other people can go out uh, and you know design studies to to examine empirically. So, very excited about this.